Welcome back, everybody, to Verbal Remedies at the Twisted Teapot. I am Hartley Wolf. Tonight we have Matt Windle with us, who's come all the way down from Birmingham to be with us tonight. Matt's career as a poet began about eight years ago when he became the Poet Laureate of Birmingham uh, for 2007 to 2008. Uh, since then, alongside being a champion boxer, uh, Matt has led a career in poetry that has taken him around the world. Um, and he also earns his bread and butter running poetry workshops for people of all ages. So everybody please put your hands together for yeah. Matt Wimble. Yeah. Right, so the, um, these workshops that you run, uh, a lot of it is with kids in schools, right? Yeah, predominantly. They really like it. Uh, my first question that I say is, who thinks poetry is boring? Uh, and one time I had 200 year 10s down Gloucester. And I asked that question, and about 195 hands went, went up in the air. And then by the time I'd driven back from Gloucester at the end of the day, I had about 97 friend requests on Facebook. So, so do, you do, do you give them exercises or like assignments? Yeah, yeah, we build it up throughout the day, and we do little rhyming games, and we get them up to the front, kind of battling with each other, and we put them, um, work them in like groups of five. So when they come up to perform at the end of the day, they'll all have their individual piece that they need to say. Let's go back again to what you said quickly about the kind of places you like to perform, because... You like to perform off mic when you can, don't you? Why yeah. is that? I just, again, talking about like uh, it being intimate and stuff, I feel like the way I try to come across when I'm performing is I'm just talking to everyone, like I'd speak to someone in the bar or like I'm talking to you now, and I, and I just try and be normal, and I think the microphone makes you seem less normal. You're more of like somebody because you've got a microphone, whereas when I can just be free, it's like, especially in a place like this, I'm just part of the audience and people are just listening to me talk. Now let's talk about boxing. Now I'm right in thinking you're, you're within the, the nation's top ten boxers. Yeah, yeah, about eight or something in the country. Right, okay, yeah. right, so top eight. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't being picky. I was just, I was just saying <laughs> kind of where I was. I wanted to ask if there's any connection between boxing and poetry. Um, I mean, how, if at all, does boxing influence your poetry? It gives you something to write about, for starters. It's just another topic of something that you can write about. Um, people say to me, do you get nervous when you're going to perform your poetry? I say, if I can get punched in the face in front of 500 plus people, <coughs> I can talk in front of some nice people and hopefully not end up getting punched in the face. You know? <laughs> but yeah, so there the, are the a confidence thing, you know, because boxing is a performance, the same way poetry is a performance, it's an entertainment business and that. Um, so yeah, there are, there are a few more parallels that, that you can come between it. And link but I mean, so with regards to performance, do you, do you feel like the fact that you're a boxer also affects your performances? Because I've watched. Obviously, you know, plenty of videos of you performing poetry. I've also watched a few of you boxing too. And I've noticed, well, I've never really seen a poet move quite like you do when you're performing poetry. People, yeah, have said, they've to, me like, yeah, they've said to me before, oh, I, can, I can tell you a boxer. When you said you was a boxer, because you're doing your boxing moves when you're on, so she's all going to be watching for that. It's right? <laughs> <laughs> really awkward. I get in my stance and stuff, and I stand like yeah. that, and I start doing yeah. my poetry. I mean, yeah. so, like, it's, I suppose it's almost. It's almost like you're kind of delivering lines like punches, if you'll forgive the, the, corny, the corniness <laughs> of that. But, I mean, is, is it almost like perhaps the audience is sometimes your opponent? And you're I'm kind just of slipping the way? tomatoes and the lettuces that everyone are throwing at me. I'm just <laughs> slipping them, just right. slipping them past. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it is just, um, rather than, than my opponent, uh, more a sparring partner, if you like. You can try things out, and I don't really want to kill my sparring partner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the questions, and if we do a bit of Q&A, that I get asked, like, if you had to choose boxing or poetry, what, what would it be? And I say, because poetry is my job, that's how I earn my living. Being sensible, that's what I'd have to choose. But if you kind of cut me in half, I was a stick of Blackpool rock, uh, I'd say boxer more than I said poet. So when I'm boxing, I just feel like that's me. Yeah, I'm, have you, I'm sure you're aware of chess boxing. No. Well, chess, chess boxing is, is where people, they box for a round and then they play chess for like 10 oh, minutes. Okay. Then they box and then they play chess and basically whoever you know, <laughs> goes insane first is out. Um, but I know it just, it just kind of got me thinking like you could do that with like, you could have like a poetry slam boxing. Like yeah. people do like, <laughs> like a poem each so, and, then, and then fight each other. Some and then people do have said like, oh, we, could, we need to try yeah. something where we Combine get a ring set up and get you yeah. doing some stuff in the ring. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah no, that's great. Well, I'm out of questions. <laughs> but thank you everybody for listening. No worries. And uh, I'm very pleased to hand you over to Matt Winder now, so I hope you enjoy his performance. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sure some people in here uh, have uh, watch the film Troy. This is poems kind of about when a 
Achilles has kidnapped um, Prince Hector's cousin and she's like mighty religious and Achilles doesn't believe in any gods at all and he's saying maybe your god's immortality is their curse because everything can be taken for granted and it's kind of a little bit about that. These present lords seem to walk immortally forward and they force us mortals to let life unfold. So that's all we can do until we get old and I wish to be hot until life turns cold. And when your life gets sold, well that's when you become someone else. See people have problems in asking for help and we see images and then we get caught up in self and we doubt. Because everyone wears a smile on that face of theirs. But the joker's grin isn't a face that cares. I'm kind of used to opponents with those basement stairs. But we swap the component with replacement glares. We wear Harvey Dent-like straight to fake faces. On a daily basis from places that I slip fists like the bullet of Matrix. Right up to the stage where I read what I'm making. Some people give, sure. A lot are just taking. See, I'm just fighting... I'm writing a lot and I don't expect some sudden rise to the top as I try advice and I stop and if all else fails I'll type this with rock I'll carve it into a wall I refuse to be little I'm just half as tall a sharp pen with a pad is my carver's tool and that's all we need to leave something behind the matter kind of doesn't because it's all in your mind. As we rip and we tatter, we fall at times, but it's not how you drop. It's the way that you climb. It's the way you take action. Only division divides us. It's like life is in a fraction. It's a fact that we have minuses so that we appreciate the plus. And what's in you is in all of us, who knows? Maybe the gods are in awe of us. See, nothing's ever new. Nostradamus claimed that the world is repeated. Even the victorious end up defeated one day. No way will you be the top dog forever. But if you wish to succeed, then you must endeavour and se se sever the strings which constrict you to only one simple step at a time. And never forget that things do get better in time. And as I try to type up a legacy, I let it be rhyme. Declining is easy to do. But giving up, well that shouldn't be easy for you because you were supposed to be stronger than this. You see, it's all in a sentence and it's all in a kiss. But the lips of poison ivy are toxic and we all know a poison ivy. I just pray that the close ones say when it's behind me, there's no expiry date on forever, obviously. But then there's the rest. See, there's a beast beating up under my chest. We all stand that test of time. And time's yet to fail. So I suggest that we pin back our lug holes like Gareth Bale has and listen. Because we all do what we must. Only in the end will we have to face up to our penalties. And believe me, I've received more black eyes from the fist of my friends than my enemies. But they'll throw them for me. As well as at me. Survival of the fittest, it's what comes naturally. And naturally, some people will like this. Some of you won't. It's not the end of the world. I won't hack at my throat. If I wake on a morning, I open my eyes and I witness Goliath. Well, call me David, because I won't stop till I triumph. And if one day we clash with the Titans and they declare war on us, well, maybe it's because they are in awe of us. Guys, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah.